when Journal of World Business did their 50th anniversary edition, they had asked Jaime and I to do a retrospective on global mobility. Okay, great, this is a lot of fun, we we'll like working together. So we got to the section on developing cross-cultural competencies through global mobility, and I said, I don't know, Jaime, what do you think? Should we go back to you know, 1995, Joyce Oslin's work with the hero's journey? That was a great piece. Should we go back that far? And he said, no, Paul, I think we should go back further. Okay. You want to go back to Henry's article on you know, the, the Peace Corps, the people who spent two and a half years living abroad and how they developed their cross-cultural competencies? He said, no, we should go back further. Come on, I'm American, I can't go back that far. So he actually said, he said, no, Paula, we need to go back to Descartes 400 years ago. So he said, Descartes, not me, or Jaime, um, it's good to know something of the customs of various peoples, so as to judge our own more soundly, so as to not think of everything that is contrary to our ways as ridiculous or against reason, as those who have seen nothing have a habit of doing. This was after a nine-year stint abroad. So for 400 years, we have known that significant international experience is related to things like lowered ethnocentrism, higher cultural flexibility, and tolerance of ambiguity. Wow, this is a short talk, right? We, we pretty much know what we have. In fact, the research has been exceptionally clear in repeating that many constructs have um, shown the developing cross-cultural competencies through international experience and predict people who do well living and working internationally. My colleague Alan Bird at Northeastern University, he actually went through the literature in 2013 and found 160 cross-cultural competencies. So we're all kind of all talking over each other, but they kind of bucketed into, into three categories. They were self-management competencies, tolerance of ambiguity, resilience, the ability to handle novelty. They were other related, relationship-oriented competencies, things like humility, perspective taking. And then there were business management competencies, things like the ability to manage different multiple cultures, multiple perspectives, integrate, and the like. So 160 <coughs> down to three. Okay, so now, now we've, we've got something, right? We're, we're 400 years we've known that international experience develops cross-cultural competencies. Now we know what the competencies are. We're doing, we're doing okay but not exactly in practice. So many of you have seen the research that's showing that about a third of CEOs are needing to cancel strategic initiatives because they don't have enough agile leaders to run those initiatives. Canceling strategic initiatives because they don't have enough global leaders. Okay. Concern number two, this is not an eye chart at all. 13,000 or so global managers were asked to rate their competencies, self-rate their own competencies. The only thing you need to see is that the ones on the top are the ones they thought they did well. The ones on the bottom are the ones they didn't do so well, or they self-rated as not doing so well. The only three with any international component were the three on the bottom. Integrating oneself into other cultures, communicating multicultural, interculturally, yikes. Okay, HR, come on, we're here to solve this, right? HR. Studies have been done with chief human resource officers that show they had to say, okay, what is the number one thing you need to deliver for the future of your global organization? Number one thing they had to deliver, great global leaders. The thing they said they did least well, you got it, developing great global leaders. So, friends, CEOs are saying, we're desperate for this. Managers are saying, we don't know how to do this. And HR is saying, I'm not sure how to solve this. Come on, we've known the answer for 400 years, right? So what I wanted to do with this talk, what I wanted to do with this talk, is give a little bit of the background on why I think we're still having this conversation. Um, at the highest level, we can say, well, we're having this conversation because there aren't enough great developmental international assignments. I think we're still having this conversation because there's this interplay between biology and psychology. And there, other than us, 
we might care about biology and psychology, but there aren't too many corporations that care deeply about the biology and psychology of the people they're sending internationally. So what I'd like to talk about is sort of do what Jaime asked me to do, talk a little bit about where the research is going, and then move to where I think we can go with the practice. Does that work? All right, okay. So we know that, um, again, 400 years, we know that living and working internationally is a developmental opportunity. We also know that picking someone up, moving them to another country, putting them down in another country, having them breathe the air of that other country, and then fairy dust drops over them for them to become cross-culturally competent. That's, of course, not how it happens, right? I have a, a university president who said he wanted 100% of our students to have an international experience. Well, that's easy, put them on a cruise ship, go around a little bit. I mean, this is not the point. You want them to have a significant multicultural experience. Okay, and so we have some literature that's saying, what is that? Opportunities to question and test your own assumptions, understand the limits of your knowledge. I love working with executives who are so great in finance and supply chain and whatever, and they get abroad and say, oh my God, I don't know how to do that here. It builds humility. When they start to work outside their boundaries and not exactly sure how to, keep, how to you know, keep up the momentum of their careers, they learn tolerance of ambiguity. Opportunities to work on meaningful projects with, with peers from different cultures, you can learn some perspective taking. So we know that putting individuals in opportunities of significant cultural novelty will help them become effective global professionals will help them build those cross-cultural competencies. That's fantastic. 